Hey guys, Kyle here from No Mercy Productions here to show you guys a couple of the uh, top baits I like to use for pond or lake fishing. Um, I mostly go after bass, pike, or pickerel. Um, occasionally catfish, but I usually keep it simple. Um, like I said, bass, pike, pickerel, or when trout season starts up, I like trout. Um, but first I'll uh, start getting to my favorite baits. and um, Right now, this is probably number five one of these buzz baits they work pretty good I've never hooked anything super big on here but I have hooked uh, a couple small mouth with it and even though they are attacked this thing is attacked a lot um, I still think that they pretty they work pretty good and I have other ones um, this one's pretty small and I have a I'll show you a bigger one I've got one right here too something else got attached to it but I don't know what it is there's one of these, um, this one's a little bit different. It's like one of those straightforward ones. It's got the spinner up top. There's a lure attached to here. I got this one. And um, you'll see the difference between the one that I use. Other than it's smaller, it also has this, uh, this uh, triangular diamond type spinner right here. And this one's got the, um, the double metal spinners on there. But I've never caught anything on the bigger ones. The bigger ones are hard, harder to use for me. I don't know why. I guess maybe just because they're a little bit heavier. I guess the metal might weigh it down. So uh, that's that's number five. For number four, I um I really like these. These work really good, especially during frog season when frogs are mating and everything. Um, these work very well. Uh, try to stick with the realistic colors, which would be um, like green on the top, white on the bottom. Just like this one, green and white on the bottom. Or brown or black. They work really good too. Um, I wouldn't get too wacky with it. They make like co colors like purple and orange. I've never really seen frogs that color. So I try to stick with the realistic looking ones. I s figured that they work the best and I've caught plenty of bass, especially on here. Surprisingly, um, this one right here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there is a, a small rip in it. It might be too hard to see. So it kind of sinks. It's um, The rip was from a pickerel, actually. I don't know what it, why it was biting on a frog. I've never seen a pickerel bite on a frog week before, but it happened. Um, now on to number three. I like to use these. This is a uh, like a regular spinner. I use uh, bass, trout, pickerel, pike. Um, really, anything bites on these. These, uh, especially this one. This is my favorite. It's the uh, rooster tail. I have them in all different colors, but uh, I can try and show you other ones. But I found that um, the brown and white, the black with gold, and the white and black. Um, single hooks work the best, even though this one is a triple hook, and um, it still works really good. But I, I don't know. I've always uh, I've liked the single hooks a little bit better. I don't know why. It's just I don't know. But that's uh, that's number three. On to number four, I have this uh, torpedo rattler. Um, it works very well, very very well. Um, I take this out on the boat here and there. And I'll usually keep it on a rod where I can just throw it off the back and just kind of have it drawn along the back. And after a little bit, I'll just hear the uh, hear a splash and I see the line tighten. And that's how you know, I, always know, I always know that something's on here. Um, but they do work really good. I mostly catch bass with these. I've never really caught anything else except for bass. I believe um, but it, this works very well especially during the daytime when the Sun's hitting it I wouldn't recommend using them at night um, for some reason I've just never really had luck at night with them I have different ones I have a clear one like this it's uh, probably about two inches long at the most and then I have a uh, I have this one this one actually got stuck in a tree so it only has the one hook and it doesn't really rattle much anymore because it got stuck in a tree and I wasn't able to get it because I was fishing from the bank one day and I lost uh, lost this in the tree and cut the line 
So, um, I just wasn't able to get to it in time. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't have the boat with me. So I was fishing from the bank. And a couple weeks later, I went back to the spot. And once my boat, my boat was done being worked on, um, I was able to take it out, grab it. And uh, I found it only had the one hook left. There was two, and it also doesn't rattle no more, so it's kind of rotted. Um, I'm still yet to try it to see how it works out. Uh, it feels heavier, so it might sink, so it might be able to swim under a little bit. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, there's also a hole in the back where the old hook used to be. So I'm thinking water might get in there, So, but I might still be able to use it, uh, even though it won't sit on the top it might still sink a little bit and I might be able to use it almost kind of like a crankbait but it'll be a lot larger but I'm gonna see what exactly I can do with this um, like I said no promises but I'm gonna try something new you never know nothing it won't hurt and then I have this one this one um, works pretty good the only problem is the back uh, hook broke um, I stopped using it uh, I don't remember why I stopped using it. I guess I just couldn't find it, but uh, when I did, it was, uh, I guess, in my old tackle box, the back broke. So I had to kind of tape the two hooks back together, but it still works really good, surprisingly. Um, this one I've never caught a bass on, but I have caught a lot of pike on here. Um, I don't know, another, uh, another thing I really like to use that goes with the categories, these things, these, these work pretty well, along with the buzz baits. Um, and that was number three. On to number four, I have these. I have these, um, purple zoom baits. Uh, they're pretty good. I'll show you what they look like. They're just these, uh, purple worms with a green gloss on them. You can kind of see it. Uh, these work really good. Uh, I've had numerous... Uh, bass bite the, uh, that love to bite these and a lot of bluegill. Now I don't know if you've ever seen my previous uh, videos, I guess it's like a slideshow or whatever, just because this is a new vid uh, channel for me. The bluegill are, they're big and they love uh, these, especially during the day when the sun's hitting, I guess um, it hits the, the green sparkle or whatever you want to call it on here and it just kind of attracts attention. But, uh, you know, I just throw that out, give it a couple uh, jigs every now and then, and I'll hook myself a monster bluegill. Blue, the bluegill in that lake can usually get up to anywhere from, I'm going to say like 4 to 12 inches at the most. Um, maybe even more. I've caught some pretty pretty big bluegill before in, that, in the, the lake I fish at, and I've... I've never had a problem with any of the bait. Actually, they'll bite on anything, but these worms do work the best. Um, I've also caught crappie in the lake. Um, usually, I'll, the crappie don't bite on anything unless it's um, like minnows or something. Like, I'll go to the store and buy uh, a dozen minnows and throw them out, and I'll catch crappie that get up to about 17, 18 inches, which is the biggest one I've caught so far and I usually fish with a buddy of mine and he keeps them I've never heard of anybody that likes to keep crappy and bluegill but I don't know apparently it tastes good to him okay moving on to the last one that I like to use is these um what do you call them the the super flu by zoom and that's what these these are uh the, um Trying to think of the name for them, the I guess uh, gooseberry worms, something like that. I think that's what they're called. There's a uh, different colors, or each color I think has a different name. I think this is gooseberry or something like that. But on to these ones. These are the um, the super flukes. I really like these. These work very well. Um, before I leave to go fishing or whatever. Um, I'll usually take these and cut these in half. They have this opening in the bottom, well, I guess to you know stick the hook through. But uh, to make them smaller and just to make them a little bit better, I usually take them by there and I cut them straight up the middle. I'm not sure if I have one in here that's like that. I know I have I have one somewhere, but I don't know if I have one in here. Um, 
No, I don't have one in here. But uh, if you cut these in half and everything, um, other than doubling your surplus on them, they work a lot better, especially for smallmouth bass. Smallmouth bass will attack these things like there's no tomorrow. And before, um, I think what I was saying before, I go fishing. Uh, I usually use these early in the morning and right before I go, um, or maybe even overnight, I'll fill the bag up with um, uh, halfway with water or I'll just cover a couple of them in water and um, I'll put some kosher salt over them and it kind of absorbs the, the salt and you might be able to see the texture of it. Um, it might look like a little weird, but that's because the salt's still on there. What the salt does is it kind of gets absorbed into here and it makes it a lot heavier. And I wouldn't say a lot heavier, but it makes it heavier, um, which get, allows it to sink a little bit faster and sink a little bit better. And with the same thing with the worm, just you give it a couple jigs and I usually hook a bass. Decent size. Um, the biggest bass I've caught in that lake is, I'm going to go with about 24 inches long. It was a pretty decent size. Uh, I was probably about six pounds, maybe at the most, but I wouldn't say any more than maybe five or six pounds. Now that we're done with that, I want to show you the rods I use. Um, very reliable rods. The only problem I have one is I'll show you the first one. Um, once I can get this untangled, here we go. Now I don't use the uh, the gloves or whatever they're called for this. Um, that's the socks or gloves, whatever the hell they're called. The protectors for these or the reel or whatever. I don't use that stuff. Um, usually because I just fish every day, I just figure to be a pain. But um. I use this um, Advocate 2 by Mitchell. It's a very good rod. Um, I think the only problem I've had with it is when I first got it, the the tip broke up here. So you're gonna see that it doesn't come to uh, like a regular point like my, I'll show you my other rod does in a minute. Um, but I do really like this rod. I've had it for about six years now. And it's got me through a lot, and I've caught a lot of fish on this. And I kind of refuse to buy another rod, actually. Um, but I like the feel of it and everything. Um, the reel was replaced. Uh, this is... I don't know. This reel's very old, and everything's kind of worn out on so it's kind of hard to see. It's by um, Shimano. Um, I don't know exactly which make of reel it is. I just know the maker of it, but I don't know the type. Of a real, you know, like they have different names, like the Shimano 2000 or whatever. I think that's what this might be. But, um, what was I saying? But I did have to replace the reel. The reel was a Mitchell, and within like a couple, I wouldn't say a couple weeks, maybe within like the first year actually, I think I had it. Um, the tension on the reel just kind of broke, the knob up here broke. And I had the the valve right here. This started to bend, and it was kind of stuck in the upward position. Um, I guess the uh, the thin metal right here on the spinner. It was just the the reel was pretty much made cheaply, is what I'm getting at. But the rod itself was really good. Um, it's a two piece. I'll show you. It's kind of stuck actually, like that. I like two-piece rods for a reason. Um, if I'm driving or whatever and I don't have room, I usually have a lot of stuff. This, the, the two-piece rods work really good for me just because it's, it's easy and it's light on storage. The only problem I have had with it is um, sometimes this wasn't tight on enough. I want to go cast and the top part would fly off, but luckily I'd have something there to catch it. So I just reel back in and reattach it. So that's the only problem I had. Other with that, this rod has got me through a lot. I've This is the rod I caught the 24-inch bass with. I don't know if you've seen my other slideshow, like I said earlier. But this, this is um, a very good rod. I do recommend it, but if you're going to get it, I re do recommend changing the reel. Only because the reel is made cheaply. I do not like the reel. Um, one of my... F I actually caught the uh, bass also on... This crankbait right here. Crankbait are my favorite. Um, I did show you the top five, but um, other than those, these are my favorite.
Now, I don't know where I got, actually I do know where I got this, I didn't buy it, I found it actually, somebody left it when I was fishing, I decided to use it, and it worked amazing for me, I have one in white, and I have one in orange, um, I don't know what make they are, I'm gonna assume they're made cheaply, because when I caught a fish, I'll show you, it did that to the hook. It straightened the hook, so I don't know if it was just made cheaply or if the fish just had that much fight in it, but I doubt it is. I've, the orange one I have, I've caught huge fish on there, like, you know, like 30 inch pike, and, um, and they've never even bent that, so there's no way that a, a bass could bend that unless this was cheap, but like I said, I found it, so it's free, and it, and it works still, so, you know, I'm hanging on, but I, I will buy more eventually. Well, that's what, um, that's that rod. And here onto this one, I have a bobber on here. I'll take that off though. I used this, um, this ugly stick by Shakespeare. Um, this was my dad's, uh, and he gave it to me. And I do, I still value this rod a lot. Um, this is probably one of my favorite rods. I also use it for trout fishing. Trout is probably the most exciting for me especially on opening day i go to this one spot and i think last year between me my dad and one of my dad's friends we caught up to about 50 trout and we only kept about 20 of them um all really decent size though but this rod has got me through a lot it's uh i think it's only about four four long like four and a half five feet long i'm not sure exactly um it has the original reel still on it. And this rod was bought, my dad bought this about 20 years ago. And it's still looking brand new. It's still almost brand new looking. And this rod is phenomenal. The only thing I don't like is the line that has to fit this reel. Um, I'm just hoping, I, I take this to the, uh, to the lake with me that I fish at. And... It scares me, uh, especially when I use stuff like this. This is actually the thing I was talking about that I cut in half. I like cutting them in half just because it makes it easier. But I put that on a hook but, and I just throw it out. But what scares me is that a nice bass might come up. And since I don't have a lot of line on here, it might snap my line. I might lose my hook and my bait. So that could be a problem for me. And right now I'm kind of running low on, um, on fishing line. But... I mean, it's uh, it's it's still a good rod and reel. I like everything still original, and it's also got me through a lot. Um, now I want to show you the um things I lo I do not like. I, I don't use the most. Um, here's one of them. Here's these like little glow worm type things. Um, I don't remember exactly where I bought these. But, um, I think I might have caught one fish on them. The entire season I've had these, I've caught maybe about one fish on them. And they are terrible. Useless. Another thing is these. I go, when I go with my friend, excuse me. When I go with my friend, um, there's crawfish in the lake that we, or crayfish, whatever you want to call them. In the lake that we go to. This is a different lake than the one I go to. I go to this one by myself. When we go to another lake, there's crayfish, crawfish, or whatever everywhere, and I have seen fish eating them, but a problem is, is that these ones, I don't know why, I've bought, I've actually bought them and I've made them. I have this one, which I made, and then I have this black one, which is kind of hard to see because of my shirt. But I have this black one and I have this tan one that I bought and for some reason I have I've yet to catch a fish on them for some reason they just don't work it's I usually don't see big bass eat these I usually can see these things being eaten by bluegill or smaller bass right from the bank I've never seen larger fish eat these so this is another thing that I don't that I don't like. Usually any of this fake gummy stuff I don't like unless it's um these gooseberry worms or the um the fluke. 
And I, for going back to the worms and stuff, I usually find that gold, purple, and pink work the best. So I try and stick to the basics. Okay, sorry. Car was passing by. Um, another thing I don't like is, you know what? Here's the other rooster tail I found. This one works amazing. I guess the brighter colors work best or something, but anyway, going back to what I was saying. These worms, I do not recommend green with the tails. Any worms with these tails, I don't really recommend. Um, I've never really had any success with these, and these all blue with the, with the shine on them. I don't know if you can see them. These don't work very well either. I've never really had any success on those, but um, that's another thing I don't like. Now, if I can find them, here we go. This is another thing I like. This isn't one. This is not one of my favorites, but I do like this um, only because this was. I used this on the the first big bass I caught. The first bass that was decent size I caught was uh, a couple years ago. And it was about 18 inches. I never really got into bass fishing until about then. I was probably about 13, 14 years old when I got into it. Um, my entire life, I mostly just trout and catfish. Not, you know, catfish like that, but I, the actual animal, I didn't catfish people. But mostly, you know, trout and catfish it was uh, my main, um, whatever you want to call it. That was my main thing that I did. So bass fishing, I didn't get into a couple, about a, until a couple years ago. And um, I used one of these. This is what, all I had with me. Um, I was with my mom in the car. And it was when I first moved up here. I live in um, Pennsylvania. And when I moved up into uh, the mountains, there was this lake. It was really nice. Um, I didn't really have much with me. I had... My one rod on me, which is the first one I showed you, which was the Mitchell. I had that, and I had this. It was just laying in the back of the car, and I figured, why not? I'm here, why not? So, first, this is the first or second cast, and this was mid-fall too, and I found fall actually works very good with bass fishing. I've had my most of my success either in the summer or the fall. I've had yet to catch a bass in the winter. I've never caught a bass in the winter yet. Um, but this is, uh, these work very good. You can see that it has the rivets in it with the tail. And the difference between these and the one I showed you, this one, um, these ones are fatter and they're smaller. And I, th I just feel like these are just better in a way than these ones. I guess the, t the tail for me on here, um... I don't know, it's just kind of weird looking. Like, it's all bent and curled here. This one's, like, nice and, you know, normal. Um, plus, the body's, like, really long. And it's, I don't know, it's just weird. And it also has, like, a tan bottom, but you can't really see it. Maybe if I, like, showed you, you might be able to see the tan bottom. And it's so many different colors. It looks like maybe somebody made it. I found out the baits you make don't work as well as the ones that you go and buy. Only because they're, you could make them differently than how they're actually made, which could affect the way you're fishing. Not the way you're fishing, but the way you're catching fish. But I also found that these work pretty good. I wouldn't say it's in my top five, but definitely top ten. Um, going on to the poppers. Poppers, I've had um, some success with mostly smaller fish. I use either yellow or green with a yellow bottom. Now, these are my two favorite. Um, I do have a bigger one. And I've never actually caught anything on this. This one is, uh, I still haven't caught a fish on it. I use it maybe two, three times every time I fish just to try it. Never caught anything on it. These ones are the smaller ones. And I usually catch a lot of smallmouth on these. And I found that they work pretty good. Um, especially if you can throw them into a current. Um, I wouldn't recommend lake fishing, but if you can throw them into a current... Or if you are lake fishing, even though I, you know, I don't usually don't use them, but if you are, right along the bank, um, right if you're standing, um, or you know, like I said, in a river or whatever, throw them into the current, just give it a couple pops, and I found that that's the way that they work the best. 
I wouldn't recommend taking one out in like a boat on a big lake and just using it, especially if the water is very deep. Um, I found that these don't work that way, so I'll put that back. And uh, one of these, um, these Senko worms, or the lightweight worms or whatever they're called, these work amazing for bass and bluegill. Um, again, maybe not my top five, but definitely the top ten. My, I never use these actually until this this season. My the buddy of mine that I always go fishing with, um, you'll probably see him in more videos. He's gonna start making his own because this is our new channel, and this is gonna be for both of us. Um, but he actually showed me these this season. And I found that they work really good, but not as good as the stuff that I like to use. Um, I think that's just about it. I don't think I have anything else to show you guys. Um, right, here we go. I like to use these uh, these little fish, these little guys, uh, the artificial fish. This one, I have to buy more because this one is so messed up you'll see the it's coming apart it's just coming apart it's terrible you can see right there that the weight's coming out of it this thing was used so much and i caught so many fish on this thing it eventually just started the rip and break and i have to go get more um but i've never had the time to go get them so i'm always busy fishing um but i i don't know i think they work pretty good now if you're really going for pike pickerel or you know anything that's very aggressive i would go with one of these these things it kind of looks like a one of those spearing fish that a lot of bluefish chase but i and i have caught bluefish on it even though it's salt water this works very good with fresh water um a lot of aggressive fish like i said pickerel pike anything with massive teeth teeth will most likely uh try and devour this thing the only problem i have with it is it's very heavy but other than that, they do work amazing. So, right now, I think that's it. Um, that's just one of my, uh, this is my actual first video. Now you guys know who I am, what I look like. If you haven't checked out my Instagram, check my Instagram. You can look me up. Uh, it's Eastside Bassmaster. Um, I'll have the link in the description below for my Instagram. You can also, you can't follow me on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook no more. Um just Instagram. I'm not really too big on Twitter. Um, I just really never got into it. Uh, I think that's really it. So now you guys know who I am. Um, if you have any suggestions or have any questions, comments, leave it down below. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.